3D shadow boxes are such gorgeous gifts and so much fun to make. So in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this gorgeous mountain shadow box. I found this SVG file from Creative Fabrica, so I'll link it for you guys below. But I just thought the boho-ness of this image was so pretty and I can't wait to see how this turns out because it's actually going to be a gift for a sweet friend of mine who is having a baby girl and I wanted it to match her nursery. So let's start out in Cricut Design Space. So the the first step to creating your 3D shadow box is of course to download your image. So I got my image from Creative Fabrica and I'm going to be using this gorgeous 3D shadow box file, but because all of these nine layers had to be imported separately, I'll save you guys that process because I've already imported everything into Cricut Design Space. So to get started with our shadow box, we're going to begin by going to the upload section and I'm just going to click on these nine layer files because this is a nine layered image. So I'll click on each and every one to add them into my canvas. Now, the next really important thing that I need to make sure to do is ensure that they are sized for my shadow box. And I'm gonna be using an eight by eight inch shadow box. So with everything still selected, I'm gonna go and use the align tool here in the top toolbar. And I'm gonna choose to center everything. That's gonna keep everything all together so that I can size it all at once. And it looks like everything is actually already sized to eight inches wide by eight inches high, which is perfect. But of course, if you have a different size shadow box, make sure that you size your images for that or make sure you choose a different type of SVG file if you have a rectangular shadow box because that does make a big difference. So now that I know that, I'm gonna go through each of these layers and I'm gonna change the color to the color I know I want to cut it because I did already choose the colors before I started this recording. So I already know what color I want to make each layer. So I'll click on this first layer and kind of drag it off to the side and I'm gonna choose a really pale yellow. And in fact, I'm gonna zoom out quite a bit so that I can lay out my layers in order Order. That way they're easier for me to keep track of. So this layer actually will leave that because it's going to be a light pink. And this one's going to stay a light orange. This one I'm going to turn into a light teal. So I'm going to use the advanced feature under colors and move my slider bar between blue and green so I can get more of a teal color. And then this next layer is going to be a bit of a darker teal. So I'm going to click on that to get the same color back. And then I'm just gonna drag my circle down a bit to make it a bit darker. Actually, that's probably a little too much. That way I can tell the difference between the two colors. Then I'll grab this one and this one's gonna be like a lighter green. And then this one is gonna be a darker green. This one is actually gonna be the darkest green of them all. So we'll choose this one. And then I think I chose that on the last one too. And I wanna make sure that they all are appearing on a separate mat, which is why I'm gonna make each of them a different color because remember Cricut Design Space is going to categorize everything based on color. So it's gonna sort what mat to put each of these images on based on the different colors. So if you wanna cut everything a different color, make sure that you make them different colors here on your canvas. So once I have everything sized, I have all the correct colors chosen, then I'm gonna save my project. And then once my project is saved, I can go to make it. Then I should double check here that I have nine different mats and I am using 12 by 12 cardstock on every one of them, except for this yellow one. So I am gonna change the material size here in the drop down menu to eight and a half by 11. That will still work fine. And you could actually use eight and a half by 11 paper for everything if you wanted to. I just happen to have 12 by 12 paper as long as you have a small enough shadow box. So then I'll click continue. And I have a mix of light and medium cardstock here. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose medium cardstock. And I actually think I'm gonna increase the pressure to more pressure just to make sure that I have all my cuts really, really clear, especially like these little tiny four point stars that are gonna be in the corners. We wanna make sure that we have enough pressure. But as I'm cutting these different layers, I may come back and choose the light cardstock setting just so that I don't shred my cardstock with my Cricut trying to use too much pressure. So let's hop over to my craft table and I'll show you how to cut some of these layers on my Cricut Explore Air 2. So to get started cutting all of our cardstock, of course, you want to start with all of your colors in front of you, as well as a light grit mat. So I'm going to place the first color in the upper left hand corner of my Cricut mat. And I'm going to move all the other colors out of the way so I can cut them in order as my Cricut is ready for them. Open up my Cricut Explore Air 2 and load my mat into my machine. And then begin cutting.
And then once your cut is finished, you'll wanna unload it from your machine. And then in order to make sure that you don't wrinkle the paper, you'll wanna flip your cutting mat over and actually remove the paper from the mat like this instead of the other way around so that the paper stays nice and flat. Then I do like to keep all of my layers neatly stacked kind of on the other side so that I know what order they're going to go in. You'll also wanna pull out or kind of weed any little pieces of paper that are stuck in your layer so you don't accidentally have those in your final design. And then you'll wanna clean off your mat before you continue. And my favorite tool for this is my little red scraper. It's just kind of a hard plastic, um, solid little scraper with a sharp edge. And so I just like to go along the bottom of the mat and scrape off all my little pieces. And by the way, this tool is from 143 Vinyl, so I'll link it for you guys in the description in case you need something that can quickly and easily clean off your mat too. Then I'll just keep repeating the same process with all the other layers. So once all of the cardstock is cut on your Cricut, your next step is that you want to assemble the project exactly the way that you want it to go with the original design. So I have everything layered on top of each other, but nothing is between them yet. The best way that I found to make sure that you're putting everything in the right order and you have the right side of the paper facing up is to actually go back to the original listing. So I like to go back to Creative Fabrica and actually print out one of the photos because here on the right side, you can see it shows me what all the layers are and what order they need to go in. So that's what I chose to do, but you could also just pull this up on your computer screen if you prefer not to print. Then once you have everything in order, next it's time to assemble our design. And you have a couple different ways that you can go about doing this. You can either assemble with the first layer going back to the last layer, or you can start at the back and work your way forward. And for this design, I'm gonna start my way at the back and work my way forward, just because I wanna make sure that the design stacks up and looks really neat by the end of the process. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all of my layers that look correct right now, I'm gonna keep the last layer down, and I'm gonna flip everything else over so that I can add my 3D foam dots to the back and then flip them back onto the original design. That way nothing gets flipped around. And for projects like this, I like to use different sizes of foam dots. I believe mine are from either Hobby Lobby or the Dollar Tree. I've had this set forever and they honestly last a really long time. Or foam tape works well in areas that are gonna be a little bit larger as well. And this set is definitely from the Dollar Tree. So you'll need your foam dots and or your foam tape as well as some scissors. And I do like to use a pair of craft tweezers to pull the pieces of paper off of the layers as I go, because I just find that it's a little bit faster. So since this is the very back layer, I'm not gonna add any 3D adhesive to this piece. I'm gonna start over at the first layer that's gonna be stuck on top, because I don't wanna have any of the um, dots or the tape go between any of the gaps. So in this case, because this layer is so big, I think I'm gonna start with some foam tape here on the body. And then I'll use some dots in between to make sure all the areas are elevated. I'll just start by adding some tape here. And then I'll go back and add in some foam dots here towards the top.
I want to make sure I get the maximum 3D effect. So I am going to put foam dots in the corners in all of the different layers that I can to give it that 3D effect as much as possible. Then I think I'll go back in and add some down here as well to make sure that these little sun rays are nice and supported in the design because sometimes the weight of the paper can kind of get them to be weighed down a little bit. So we want to make sure they're nice and well supported. Then once your coverage is good, you can go through and take your tweezers and just pull off the paper backing on the 3D dots to reveal the sticky side. It is easy to get stuck to your layers. <laughs> so you wanna be super careful with that. And even though the peeling of the paper is, um, or the paper backing off these dots can be a little bit tedious, it is a really, really easy project to do and it's a great way to use up your paper stash. I am on a personal mission. <laughs> to use up as much of my paper stash as I can. So I love doing projects like this because they're so pretty, they make such beautiful gifts, and they use a ton of different colors of paper, which is exactly what I'm looking for. So when I go to apply this layer, I wanna make sure that I do as good of a job as, as I can of keeping it nice and square. Because this is going in an exactly eight inch by eight inch shadow box, I want to try to keep the edges as straight as I can. I don't want the layers to be all wonky. So I'm going to start by lining up my bottom corners and then I'll kind of go through and add the design working its way up after that. And I'll just gently press everything into place and we have our first layer down and it looks something like this. So now I'll just continue that same process through all the other layers of adding my foam tape and my 3D dots flipping it over and applying it directly on the top. Now, once I'm ready, again, I'm just gonna flip it over so that I know it's facing the correct direction. Start by laying the corners down in the bottom and then I'll let the rest of the design kind of fall into place. And there's another layer. So now we flip it and repeat. I am gonna hold the top up this time while I match these lower corners, and then lay it down nice and slow. And as you can see, as we get um, larger gaps here in the top to reveal more of the design, we're gonna end up using less dots as we go and especially less tape because our surface area is gonna be more limited. So it does start to go a little bit faster when you get to these more open layers because there's just less uh, dots and tape to lay. But it actually seems like the, um, the tape may not be as um, tall as the dots. So it might be wise to stick with one or the other just so that you don't have different heights kind of pushing on the design. But either way, no one's gonna be able to tell from the front. That's the beautiful thing about these projects is you can make them and even the mistakes you make are not really gonna be visible. So that's what's awesome about it. It is turning out so pretty, I just love it. Okay, so we've got two more layers. This is like the last um, detail layer and then we kind of get into the frame layer. So we'll probably only be using small dots for the most part. good we just have this last frame layer we're just gonna put a few pieces on here because it's not really supporting much it's just adding a pretty little finished touch to the design itself and that's probably all I'll add and now I'll flip this over and lay our final layer on top of our design 
And when it's finished, it's gonna look something like this. Now, once your shadow box design is assembled, it's time to actually put it in the shadow box. So go ahead and grab your shadow box and flip it over because you need to flip up all of the little black metal pieces so you can take out everything inside your shadow box. Typically, um, most of the time, if you're gonna do a design that has like eight layers, like mine does, you're not gonna be able to use anything inside the shadow box, including the glass. Now the glass is optional, it's up to you, but a lot of times the designs are just too thick, so you're not gonna end up needing anything but this backing. So you can pull out the little extra piece that pushes everything forward, as well as the paper, and even the glass. So for this, it's really self-explanatory, it's super easy. You're just gonna flip it so that the front of the design is facing down towards the table and lay it inside your shadow box. Sometimes you need to pull the little black tabs back a little bit further to make sure it can accommodate the whole design. And sometimes if your corners are not super neat, this part can be a little bit challenging, but luckily the paper's pretty flexible. Looking back, I probably could have made my design maybe a half inch or so uh, smaller than the shadow box. I did design everything or size everything at exactly eight by eight, which is exactly what the shadow box fits. So that's why it's a little challenging to fit in there. And I push it in around the tabs, make sure nothing's getting hung up. So we're not ripping our paper. Oh, there we go. Oh boy, and that's... <laughs> pretty tight with all these layers, but we did get it in past all of the tabs. Yeah, as you can see, the front is a little bit wrinkled, so I probably would have helped myself to make my design a little bit smaller than the shadow box itself. We're already here, so we can't go back and change it now. I ended up making the first layer white to match the outside of the shadow box, and I was able to find paper that I think makes it blend really well. So I really like that part about it. Yeah, I want her to be able to hang this because I am giving this as a gift. So I think I'll probably go ahead and put this in, even though I would like to <laughs> skip it, because um, I want her to be able to hang the shadow box on the wall if she'd like. So I'll go ahead and just maybe gently work down these tabs. So I definitely made some mistakes with the shadow box and it's far from perfect, but I still really like the way that it turned out and I think it's gonna make really beautiful nursery decor. Hey y'all, I just wanted to pop in and give you a little bit of an update. So you'll recall the last time you saw this project, there was a white frame all the way around the outside of the finished shadow box, but it was really wrinkly looking at the top. And so after thinking about it, I decided to peel off that top white layer. I just very carefully peeled off the foam dots and because of the frame around the whole shadow box, any damage to that first layer of paper was hidden by the frame. So I decided to do that because I wanted to give the rest of my layers of paper in my shadow box a little bit more space. And I think that it looks so much better because everything doesn't look quite as cramped as it did before. So just a little bit of encouragement for you that my projects don't always turn out the way that I expect them to either, but I wanted to give you that update in case the same thing happens to you. Plus with a little bit more room in the shadow box, I was able to more comfortably stick the cardboard backing back onto the shadow box without feeling like everything was quite so squished. If you learned something in this video, then don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to DIY Alex for more videos a lot like this one. I love connecting with you on social media, so be sure to use the links in the description below to find me on all your favorite social media platforms. All the hearts.